The video you're about to watch is either sponsored by and by to funded by the viewers and features products that were either failed, provided, or bought and carefully snuck into the house under the cover of darkness. <laughs> Vintage, rock, metal. These are the three spirit nano amps from Hughes and Kettner. And in this video, I'm gonna test them all. Hughes and Kettner have taken their black spirit amp and cut it into pieces and then reassembled it into three tiny little nano amps. We've got the spirit of vintage, the spirit of rock and the spirit of metal. They are amps, they are loud. And in this video, I thought we'd take a look at which one might be the best for you, if any. Let's take a look at the close up of the amp. This one is the vintage. Can you smell what the rock is cooking? And then with some wonderfully red knobs, we've got the spirit of metal. So there they are, they're tiny, and I've already checked these amps out at 42 Gear Street back in 2020, but now I've got them in the studio to really hear them through a cab, because last time I only heard them through headphones, and um, I remember them sounding good, but I remember them lacking some features. First I'll run through the specs of the amp and the features, then we'll run through some sounds, then I'll review the amp and you can decide if you want to buy one, and if so, which one? Although small, they're becoming quite cumbersome to hold all three. So luckily, they're all the same apart from the voicings. We'll just take a look at, say, the vintage and uh, to run through what it has and what it doesn't have. Before I go into the features of the Nano Series amps, just know that this is a real amp, or they are real amps. They will power a 4x12 cab, they'll power a 2x12 cab, a 1x12. Anything that is a guitar cab will be powered by these. It's just super, super small. Alrighty, so on the front panel, we've got a headphone socket for your headphones, should you want silent practice. Master volume, which is the overall volume of the amp, so you can set your tone with this section and then make it softer or louder with this knob. Sagging, we'll go into in a little bit, and I'll show you rather than tell you what that does. Tone is not what I first imagined it would be. It's not like a tone knob on a guitar where you roll off some of the highs. It's actually voiced differently for each amp. We will go into that again. I'll show you rather than tell you. And gain is how much preamp saturation you're gonna get. So down here, you're gonna get a fairly clear, clean signal, and then it gets uh, more gritty as you turn that up. And then of course, input is where you plug in your guitar or instrument. Over on the back, first is the line out, and this is an unfiltered, unaffected line out, meaning that if you use this line out to go into your computer for recording or into a PA system, then you would need to add some kind of cab simulation to make it believable. The benefit of not having cab simulation is that you could also run it if you have a, a large guitar amp that uh, is running through a guitar cab, you could put it through the effects loop. So put it straight into the return of the effects loop of your amp, and then it would run through the power amp of your amp, and then through the cab, meaning you'd have this as a preamp only, which is uh, pretty good. So you can have a different voice for your amp. Aux in is where you plug in some kind of auxiliary signal, um, like a phone or an MP3 player or something, or even a keyboard, I guess you could put that in. That will go straight to the power amp section of this amp, so it's not affected by the gain and the, the saturation of, of, the, of the voicing. Next up is the power, on and off, pretty simple. AES is something that the amp has to have uh, due to European standards because it's um, some it falls in the category of some kind of electrical goods where it has to have an automatic switch off. So I guess that it's automatic energy saving and after around 90 minutes it, uh, it's, the amp switches off if it's receiving no signal. So if you're playing it's not going to switch off. If you're not playing but the amp's turned on and you leave it for an hour and a half the amp will be turned off automatically and you can just turn it off, uh, back on, sorry, by recycling the, the power button on and off again. Uh, have you tried turning it off and on again? Anyway, um, very important, speaker out. And this is where it says you can go from four to 16 ohms. Just looking at my screen, 25 watt at eight ohms. That's how I'll be running it today. And um, it does run without having a speaker plugged in. So you can use it for silent practice and then that's the power supply there, which is one of these inline sort of laptop looking things. It's 24 volts, two amps. So maybe you could also run it off some kind of pedal power supply. I don't know. I don't think mine does that. Before I plug it in, I want to show that it's also got these tiny little cute handles on the side, like the, the H&K Grandmeister amps. That's pretty cool. It makes sense to me to do vintage, then rock, then metal. So if you want to skip the vintage for any reason whatsoever, you want to go straight to the metal or straight to the rock, there'll be timestamps and chapters in the YouTube player. 
and uh, I'm going to try and ch achieve three things. A, a nice clean tone, so an appropriate clean tone on each amp, an appropriate uh, sort of mid-gain tone, something a little crunchy on the edge, nothing too overdriven, and then something lead line with, with much more gain. So those are the three things I want to achieve on uh, every amp. I have played through these already, so I do know that particularly this amp responds differently to guitars with single coils and guitars with humbuckers. So when and if I think it's appropriate, I'll be using this guitar and a few others with different pickup configurations. <laughs> It's a nice, warm, round, vintagey, fendery, bassman tone. Um, I really enjoy this kind of sound. Let's let's make it a little bit darker. There's also a lot of dynamics. Uh, it's jumping out, not not exactly dynamic like a tube amp would be. Sorry, but um, it, it's certainly jumping out. It's not all flat, which which is nice and. You might notice there's no reverb, which I will, of course, talk about a lot in this video. Um, it's a nice, clean... If I was if I was playing something that re required some kind of clean tone without reverb, I'd be very happy with this. Yeah, it's nice. Um, let's push that sagging up so you can hear what's going to happen. It certainly gets very loud and hissy in between about three o'clock and whatever that is, five past five. Um, here, it doesn't seem to do much. Oh, that's not fair. It does stuff, but it's not so noticeable as it is in that last sort of quarter. Noticeably louder, so let's bring that down. Let's take it back to somewhere sensible. So I'm happy with that as a clean tone. Let's push a bit more gain and see what that sounds like. So it starts to break up there and we're gonna to need to pull that master down. It's okay. I mean, that didn't jump out. Let's mess with some tone. That's nice. So that's tone number two. And then let's see if we've got some kind of lead thing that I can persuade. Uh, bring out some sagging. So let's pretend the amp now is really loud. Also notice that the amp is not really loud on the master, but it is really loud in the room. That's uncomfortable. So that's how loud it really goes. And um, my tail is a little bit noisy, so ignore the... Well, don't ignore it, but there's some noise coming through that wouldn't... coming through many other guitars, I think. Okay, um, some lead stuff. <laughs> That's loud, and also it's gaining. I, I like this amp. Um, I need to try the other two, but as far as I remember when I tried them before, this was my favorite. I don't know if that's going to change. We'll find out in the duration of this video. Before I move on to the rock, let's just try something with humbuckers. Gain. And then 
find something a bit more leady. Sagging. <laughs> Yeah, I like this amp. Uh, that's a nice tone. I wish it had reverb. We'll go on to that more later. Let's move on to the Spirit of Rock. So, Spirit of Rock. This is a more crunchy sound, more a la um, Marshall E kind of tone. I will play it first with my Telecaster. Let's try those same settings on the uh, Les Paul. All right, I prefer the sound of this, the humbuckers on that low gain. It's, um, it's, there's not much gain at all. It's really, 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 there's the minimum, and there's where I was, roughly. Um, let's bring some more gain up. I don't really want to fatten up this sound too much with the sagging, but let's try and get some noise. Let's try and get some rock out of this. That is, that's too fat. That's way too much for me. Um, that's rock, okay? I can rock all night. Again, notice I'm on just above like almost nothing master volume and it is on the edge of being uncomfortable sat here. So I'm just gonna push it up a little just so you can get a slight taste. That is already super uncomfortably loud, but I'm noticing that there's um, there's noise floor coming up with it, and uh, that shouldn't be that way. It should not be that way. So I'm guessing these amps are a little bit noisy, but when you're playing, you can't really hear it. Uh, sagging, so I've got something that's, I need to do with the sagging a little bit more. Let's just play that. Dips in volume there. I'm guessing it's going to jump back up again. I'm wrong. <laughs> okay, it dips in volume at the end, so it's louder. Is, it's just compressing so much that you're losing the dynamics, but that's what sagging and, and uh, power amp saturation is, I guess. Um, let's try something Sabbathy. <laughs> Thicker, warmer, saggier, droopy pants. Um, yeah, I don't really want to push that gain up anymore. There's a lot of gain on tap. Darn it, that is um, super loud. Uh, 
This rocks. Um, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it more this time than I did when I was uh, at 42 Gear Street, pro Street, probably because it's plugged into an amp. I just think there's almost too much gain. Um, my favorite area is, is kind of in this area down here. And even then it sounds super compressed and let's push the sagging down. Let's try and get something going. Yeah, it's, it's gainy, it's loud. I'm not even anywhere near halfway on the amp and I know it doesn't work like all the way to the top is three times as loud, but that is gonna be loud enough to play with the drummer but not clean. I like the spirit of rock. I like it more now than I did before. Should we do some metal? So, metal. And in the spirit of being fair, I will begin with the Telecaster, which is not a very metal sort of guitar, but it, it will do metal, because it's a telly, it does everything. So, first I want to get something clean. And I don't know how well this is going to go. Okay. Not clean. It's not clean. I mean, I'm, I'm, there's, there I am, that's where I am, and that is gain. It's barely on. It's not a clean amp, so it does metal, as in heavy, distorted metal. It does this very cool single coil sort of um, Queens of the Stone Age kind of heavy but not metal. I like that. That's a cool tone. Um, it's not the metal I was expecting and probably not the metal you were expecting. Uh, let's, let's just play with this for a little bit, see what happens if I push the gain up on this telly. I like that. That's not that's not what I would call metal, but I like that. Let's push the sagging way up and see if it does some kind of um, I don't know Black Sabbath. It's almost there. I mean, I'm pushing the sagging right up. Let's bring that. It's a sound that I enjoy, but not one that I would call metal. So let's switch to humbuckers and then to something low tuned. Again, I like it more than I did when I first tried it. Um, still not a metal tone, I would say. Not the tone that I'm, I'm imagining in my head. It's 
getting me Foo Fighters heavy rock metal. Although the gain is barely up. That's what happens if you turn the gain all the way up. It just gets really gainy. Uh, I wouldn't. I, I'm. I'm not into that. Did not intend to go there. All right. Um, I'm gonna go drop tune because I'm not getting that tone that I want. Maybe you found something you like or love or hate. But I need to go down tuned. Chapman time, the ML3 modern, and it's uh, drop C. Tuner off. <laughs> Meaty, thick, warm. Don't like that. Oh, to go mic microphonic. I would have killed for this amp, um, or maybe like this one, but this series of amps when I was a teenager and trying to get to practice and didn't know anything about tone, didn't know anything about playing really, didn't know, knew nothing, but wanted to make noise. And this amp would have been close to what I wanted on, on the lower gain setting. It's super loud. Let's let's see if I can get a bit louder without getting complaints. Whoa! I am going to leave it there with the metal one because I'm still not that experienced in metal playing. However, I could see myself having a lot of fun with that. As I said, um, I would have killed for that if I was a, maybe not killed, but maimed for, for that when I was a teen. Um, let's move on to some reviews. I'll bring them all together and let's discuss it, rip it open and find out which amp is for you, if any. I'm gonna open straight up with, this is my favorite, the spirit of vintage. It is a believable Fender Baseman low gain, almost clean, but with some warm end and some, some nuttiness on the edge. Um, it's nice. And for, um, hang on, no, go backwards. When I was playing the metal one, I completely forgot that I was playing an amp that is as big as this. The sound may not have been to your liking. It wasn't exactly to my liking, but I believe we could tweak it a little bit more to get a little bit closer. However, this little box, or that little, this little metal one here, was giving me so much volume from something that is barely bigger than my first mobile phone. Hello? Yes, now I'm making a video right now. So, back to this one. Um, I like the, the vintage tone. I like the grittiness on the gain parts. I've got to bring this up straight away, and I, th I think I said this at 42 Gear Street. 
It is a real shame it doesn't have any reverb and or an effects loop because that would then make this a really good amp. I am missing that reverb, missing a noise gate on the metal, missing the reverb and, and or delay on the rock and the vintage. I think it's insane that this doesn't have an effects loop or a reverb because you can't put one convincingly, convincingly before into the preamp because then you're going to get distorted reverb. And that's not the sort of thing you want when playing something fendery. Um, it's just going to get mushy, it's going to get blur, and you need a reverb. So if you are using this to go into a mixing desk and this is your on stage sound, you could probably get away with it. But then is that what people buying this want? I don't think so. I think Hughes and Kettner have made this one. I think this one is superb vintage. Let's move on to the rock for a second. I think the rock is so much gain, so much gain. I mean, I, there, that's where I was just on sort of nine o'clock and anywhere past that for me was, was getting into um, uncontrollable gain territory where the, the notes were just not um, separating. That being said, I didn't play a lot of lead with it. I was mainly playing rhythm stuff. So for lead, yes. However, you still need that reverb to pull it back in the mix. Again, so much volume. Um, if you're after volume, you've got no problems whatsoever with these little mini nano series. And then let's talk about the metal one. Metal, metal, metal. The spirit of metal, the one that I gelled with least, but had some of the most fun. I think that if I were... Um, if I only had, like, if I had to go to a gig, not gig, maybe gig, if I had to go to a gig or a practice session or something where I had to go in one journey, so we're talking on the bus, on the train, and there was already a cab there, then that's fun. I would not be happy again with the noise that's coming out of this or the lack of reverb or effects loop. Dang. The one saving grace on the reverb effects front is that if you are going to go for the line out on the back of these, you can add any reverb afterwards. But then you're kind of using this as a preamp. Yeah, that's fine. So as a preamp, pretty decent. And certainly, certainly the vintage, yeah, vintage would be something that I would absolutely recommend. That is a fun little thing. Uh, at the price it's at, maybe maybe not but certainly if you're after a gift for someone and uh, you want to downsize their uh, equipment selection say hey get rid of that big old amp try one of these tiny little blighters I have to commend um, Hughes and Kettner for on the back let's just bring that up again on the back writing where is it there 25 watts at 8 ohms I know they marketed stuff uh, or people market stuff at 4 ohms 50 watts but I don't believe many people use 50 watts, so therefore, well done, Hughes and Kettner, for making it clearer and saying 25 watts at 8 ohms. I like that. Regarding the design, I think they look great. I love what Hughes and Kettner have done with the design. I particularly like the little tiny handles on the side. That's very cute. I think the blue light is instantly recognisable, and if you're playing this on stage, even though it's tiny and can power a 4x12, uh, you'll recognize that Hughes and Kettner look from the blue light. I think it looks great. Uh, I think that the knobs on the front are big enough to use, so you haven't got these tiny knobs. There's not too many options. However, missing reverb. That's not really a design aesthetic, is it? I would have given up on having a, a sagging mode, like a three-way switch, like no sagging, little bit of sagging, lots of sagging, and having a reverb in there. That's what I would have given up to have this same sort of form factor with more features. Dang. So to top this off, I, I would absolutely recommend the Spirit of Vintage. That's a fun little amp with a good tone. That warm, clean tone is great. Very, very believable, very enjoyable as a player. Um, quite dynamic, not as dynamic as I'd like it, but you know, you can't have everything you wish for. And then when you add some more gain, you're adding some more grit and it's still good. But I think for the, like, the 10th time I've said it now, it's missing that reverb. And I'm, I'm sorry, H&K, but it, it really, really is. However, if that doesn't bother you, it shouldn't bother you because look at the size of it. It's tiny. You could throw that. You could, you could probably juggle these three on the way to a gig and, uh, and not be tired by the time you get there. That's a weird thing to say. Who juggles things to gigs? Anyway, uh, <laughs> let's answer the question. Which one is right for you? Well, I would say that everybody could use the vintage one. 
I think that if you want something with no gain and some gain on tap, then the vintage one is the way to go. If you want to rock, it depends on what kind of rock. So classic rock, of course, go for the rock one. But if you're going for heavy rock, rather than turn the gain up on the rock one, get the metal one and keep the gain down. So I didn't particularly enjoy the metal one when it was lots and lots of gain, but that could be down to me. However, I did enjoy the low gain modes on the metal with some sort of Foo Fighters heavy rock sort of sound. So Queens of the Stone Age stuff, that that kind of almost metal, but not metal, heavy rock. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then the rock one, as soon as I turned the gain past about 11 o'clock, I didn't like it any much, very much anymore. So, but uh, yeah. I'm, I'm warbling now. Let me know in the comments which one you liked. Which one did you enjoy the most? Was it the vintage? Was it the rock? Was it the metal? And now that I've said comments, you can now know that we're at the end of the video, which means you are part of the end of the video club. Congratulations. And to prove that you are a member of this prestigious elite, when you leave your comment down there in the comment section, please also include the phrase smells like geek spirit and that'll let me know that you made it to the end and uh, we can all have a jolly good laugh at people who don't know why you're writing that in the comments that is it from me and these tiny little lightweight but loud oh so loud amplifiers from Hughes and Kettner if you want to see more from me there are videos over there if you really want to see more from me click the subscribe button down there but please please click the like that helps a lot so that's all I really want and uh, all I really really want 